My farming system is a bit challenging because of the weather here and laxity of water, but water we can have unless we have the, the boreholes or the dams and they give the enough machines to supply us with water. Uh, my name is Moses Mohoro. I'm a farmer in doing strawberries in Lake Kipia East. Garden, I think, is spring. The spring, this side, was actually fenced, and this was the actual entry where you see the gate. It's the entry to this spring. So the fencing was actually done uh, uh, to, to ensure that entry to these points were actually not by livestock and also by human beings inside to do the farming and also drinking water inside. So water is taken from outside. Uh, my name is uh, Mr. Mandela. I'm just a small farmer within this area. But the problem nowadays, it has become dangerous because if you farm, when it see this onion or maize or you have planted or watermelon, it has been eaten by these animals. We must have to guard it during the night. The climate has changed. So the elephant come to the farmers, started destroying their, their farming. You cannot be compensated. So that one is the problem. The main problem is that one. Because of the drought situation here today, there's been a lot of livestock invasion into the park. And a lot of elephants and a lot of wildlife were displaced into towns and they're coming into people's backyard and they're actually feeding them, causing so much. Um, really spider web. I mean, these are all elephant trucks. So you can see they're not just crossing everywhere in the road. The few places they're crossing, that is one of the major ones on the bridge, just uh, to the south of the bridge where we were. This is this one here, and there's one more uh, out there. So, and also we would like to be very careful that we don't call every single place a, a corridor that they, they just cross, uh, because people then will say, oh, everywhere is a corridor, then what is a corridor? Lobelia flowers uh, started in 2000 and majorly our job is to grow and cultivate flowers. We grow flowers at 20.2 uh, uh, hectares and at the moment we are selling all our flowers to the auction in the Netherlands. We have about uh, 250 uh, permanent employees and about 100 uh, employees working on a contract basis. This flower farm uh, belongs to a local farmer. He was once working uh, in the government. The area around has uh, residents who have been here for quite a while, and they do embrace the, the agriculture that is taking place around this area because it's creating employment for the, 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 the people around this area and improving their livelihood. Yeah. So it doesn't become uh, too hassle to get land. For as long as you have the finances, you'll get land. What we've done is we, are, we don't draw the water from the stream. So what we do is we harvest all the rainwater and we use the boreholes. Because if we, uh, all the flower farms around decided to, to manage our water usage from the stream, then the communities around will suffer. The yeah, Angusisi Water Users Association is a community-based where 
We have brought all the users together who abstract water in Goshishi River and also who abstract groundwater within the Goshishi catchment. We have three classes of users. We have the small scale farmers, we have the large scale farmers, and also we have the pastoralists. So it is our mandate to make sure that everybody has clean, safe water for drinking, ground water for irrigation, harvest and water for irrigation. We monitor everything to make sure that whatever they are using is clean and is safe and accepted. And in our association, we bring everybody on board. As the SDG 6, don't leave anybody behind. We have brought everybody on board. We have tried to manage the water. We have tried to train them on the best way uh, of doing farming, the best way of conserving water. Crops, which are not uh, using a lot of water, so those are the, our activities which we do on daily basis. This water does not belong to the government. It belongs to the users. It is our leases. Yeah, we should care for it. If you wait for somebody employed to come and care for you, my friend, you are lost. So out of those trainings, yes, this is your land. It belongs to you. But if you pollute this water, Tomorrow, your daughter might be married downstream, yeah? where you have polluted the water. So out of the training, now people realize, oh, this is our resource. Oh, it's our property. We need to protect this. We need to care for the downstream. They are Kenyans. This is God-given free, and we have to manage it. So uh, with that training, those issues of lands are now minimized and everybody knows, oh, this, uh, the, the, the Rua is not taking our land, but it is doing planning, good planning. It is doing good management. We are standing at Sarah Community Conservancy today and um, I think Sarah Community Conservancy is one of the best examples of what a community conservancy is. Um, it has really led the way in terms of uh, promoting coexistence between wildlife and people and um, really the structures that have been set up, the governance structures that have been set up really demonstrates how effective people are, communities are, at conserving wildlife. And um, of course, the fact that there are rhinos here being kept by the communities, um, I think are really one of the greatest examples of what um, a community conservancy can be. Pastoralism is the dominant livelihood system here and that means that people really rely on their livestock um, to survive and livestock need pasture. Pasture is what everything in this landscape needs to survive. Um, it's, it's important for the livelihood system, it's critical to, to wildlife also. It really reflects some of the competing claims on, on this land by, those, uh, by both uh, people, livestock and wildlife. For every grower, our dream is to grow big. At the moment, we are at 20 hectares. We do believe that uh, if all goes well, we need to move to maybe 40 hectares, and maybe 60, maybe 100. Then it's, it's, it's a positive thing, because at least you'll be impacting the community. You'll be creating more employment and more income for ourselves as well. Yeah. The problem is that one of the problems I realized, OK, it's finance. And also another one, personal interest. Yeah, you meet people there, they have personal interest than the organization interest. That's the only uh, issue killing most of the project in Kenya, if I am truly telling you. Um, it's amazing seeing it on a small, level, small scale, uh, but really imagining it happening on a much wider uh, scale in 
all community conservancies, I think would be, um, would be my vision.